All the latest news from Microsoft Build, including GitHub Copilot extensions and a new dev kit from Qualcomm, plus Athena Crisis goes open source, and the nerdiest way to control your concert wristband. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So my shirt this week is not what I want to focus on. It's fine, but, but it's not why we're here. We're here because I got these incredible 404 Air Force Ones from Nike. This was actually an official drop, not something that I had designed, and you guys, you have to check them out. Not only are they blue screen of depth blue, but they have a 404 error on them. Now, obviously I wore these to Microsoft Build because how could I not? Which is a great segue into a roundup of Microsoft Build news because that's where we were last week. So yes, Microsoft Build took place last week in Seattle, Washington, and there was tons and tons of announcements, many of them AI based. And I've got a link in the show notes in the description to the full book of news if you wanna check that out. But here are a couple of highlights. First, on the GitHub front, we announced GitHub Copilot extensions. Look, we know how great GitHub Copilot is, whether you're using it on github.com or in your favorite IDE, and now you can extend them to work alongside some of your favorite services. So to start out with, GitHub Copilot extensions are available from partners like Datastax, Docker, Lambda Test, LaunchDarkly, McKinsey & Company, Microsoft Azure and Teams, MongoDB, Octopus Deploy, Pangea, Pinecone, Product Science, Readme, Sentry, and Stripe. And extensions are supported in GitHub Copilot chat on github.com, Visual Studio, as well as VS Code. And although the GitHub Marketplace is going to offer extensions to everyone, organizations can also choose to create private Copilot extensions for their own tooling too. And so how these extensions work is actually pretty slick. So for instance, in the GitHub Copilot for Azure extension, you can call up Copilot for Azure directly inside GitHub Copilot chat, and then get info about deploying your code to Azure services and, and whatnot. And I've got a bunch of links down below um, to the GitHub blog, the VS Code page for how their chat API works if you want to build features into your VS Code extension, and links to our Copilot partner program if you want to build an extension of your own for your own service. And speaking of Copilots, all of the Copilots were out and about at Microsoft Build. Yes, all 99 of them. But small language models like Phi3, um, and we talked about that series a couple of weeks ago, those were on display too. So one of the big announcements that happened right before Microsoft Build was the new Copilot Plus series of PCs from Dell and HP and Microsoft and, and others. And these are the next generation of laptops that are optimized for AI workloads. And they're powered by the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. And you guys, after years of promises that ARM on Windows would be a thing, I'm really, really hopeful that this time it's for real. Qualcomm has done some really cool stuff on the hardware side, including a new MPU that exists alongside like the CPU and, and GPU, and that can be focused on specific AI tasks. And then on the software side, Microsoft has been working on a new thing called the Windows Copilot Runtime that'll help developers take advantage of these new capabilities. So this is gonna ship with a bunch of local models, including a new version of Phi 3 called Phi Silica, and, and this is actually specifically optimized for on-device AI stuff. But beyond all that, the Windows Copilot Runtime, and to be clear, this is actually gonna run on a range of different devices, has really been optimized to make working with local models really, really easy. And, and right now, that isn't the case. So part of this work is the news that native PyTorch support is now in Windows Direct ML, meaning that you can take models from places like Hugging Face with one click, no need to convert the model or make modifications to get it to run. I had a really great talk with Divya and Vicente at Microsoft Build about this stuff, and I'm super excited about the possibilities for devs. Oh, and if you are interested in that new AI hardware for Windows, Qual in addition to the laptops, Qualcomm announced a Snapdragon dev kit that's $899 and goes on sale in June. And it looks like it's a great way to either port your you know, existing x86 app over to the latest processors, or if you wanna do more local AI building. And so I've got links for all that stuff in the show notes and the description. Okay, so a lot of the stuff that we've talked about are for more experienced developers. But if you're new to development or to GitHub, we've got a brand new series on GitHub for you. 
Helmed by my friend Kadesha Kerr, GitHub for Beginners is our new series that'll help you get started with GitHub, whether you're a student, a hobbyist, or a professional. And I've got a link to a blog post that Kadesha wrote about the new series, as well as a link uh, to the first uh, episode of, on this very YouTube channel. And stay tuned to the series because you might see me pop up in an episode or two. And now it's time for my GitHub Project Spotlight. And this is where I highlight cool open source projects uh, that I think you should check out. And this week I want to highlight Athena Crisis. So Athena Crisis is a modern retro turn-based strategy game and it's from Christopher Nakazawa. And it's published by Null and Null Games is actually helmed by GitHub co-founder Chris Wantrap. And Christopher has decided to open source Athena Crisis. And, and he says that Athena Crisis is an example of how to build a high quality video game using only JavaScript, React, and CSS. And fans of the game can offer their improvements, um, they can build additional tools for the games, they can study the code, they can make their own JavaScript-based web uh, games if they want to do that. And to kickstart contributions, Nakazawa Tech um, has funded $5,000 worth of open source contributions, and then Polar is going to match that amount for an initial total of, of $10,000 for people who make contributions. And so I've got a link down below in the blog uh, to a blog post uh, about Athena Crisis, and it's gonna outline um, what is open source and what isn't, and how you can contribute. But I really, really love seeing games go open source, and in this case, I also really appreciate they're offering you know, funding incentives. And so I've got links to all this stuff, including the Athena Crisis GitHub repo in the description down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so Taylor Swift is I think in her fourth, it's either her fourth or her fifth leg of her Eras tour. And part of the tour is that she has these LED wristbands that change color depending on what part of the show is happening and, and I guess like maybe even where you are in the stadium. She's been doing this sort of thing for years now and the bands are actually pretty cool. But what if you could hack those wristbands? Well, Thanks to the Flipper Zero, a multi-tool for hackers that we've talked about before, you can. So John Grant Cumming highlighted how to do this on his blog, and it turns out um, that really what's happening behind the scenes is that there's like a really large IR remote control that's controlling all these bands, and that's how they can change color. And the Flipper Zero can actually act as an IR remote, so with the right you know code in place, you can control the colors. Now there are a couple of projects on GitHub, and I've got those linked alongside uh, John's blog. If you want to play around with one of those yourself, and if you actually if you happen to have an, an extra wristband from a Taylor Swift show or Coldplay or Beyonce or, or someone else, um, and all that is linked below. And now I've decided that I'm going to have to change the color of my wristband at a show. Um, so so that's that's my new goal, and so that means I'm going to have to go to one of the European stops later this summer. That's just that's just how this works. Let me know your favorite Flipper Zero hacks in the comments down below or your thoughts on any of the other stories that we covered. Maybe your favorite announcements from Microsoft Build or anything else. That's going to do it for me. If you liked this episode, please leave us a like to help out the algorithm and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time. <laughs>